crafted. So we are going to wrap up this last section of the text so that we can move on to more fun things, but just creating SVGs with like shapes and more complex things and just really diving deep. So another way that you guys can manipulate text is actually curving text. And there are a few different options all inside of Illustrator that you can do to create some really cool effects. What you want to do is type out your text itself in your font selection and you're going to go up to effect and go to warp. Now clicking on any of these is going to give you a different result and when you open up these things controls are going to pop up where you can actually make some more adjustments. You can change whether or not it goes horizontal or vertical. You can also use this drop down here and kind of filter out different designs really easily. So I'm going to show you guys really quick what each of those options look like. So we have an arc. We also have arc upper and arc lowers. We have shells, which kind of give you like a massive top portion or a massive bottom portion. There's arching. We have a fish thing, which kind of creates like a little fish shape. We have fish eye. We've got squeeze. We have inflate. There's twist. There's rising. There's waving flags, folds. And again, so there's really a lot of different options that you can use. And if you use the controls, you can manipulate the text even further to get a really custom look to it. And depending on the font that you choose, it'll also vastly change how these designs end up looking. So outside of using the effects and warp feature that we just went over, you can actually manipulate your text in a couple of other ways and achieve results like this. So what's really cool is those top two are used creating a shape. That middle one is using a pen tool, and the bottom one is actually just warping the envelope that it came in. In order to get results like these top two, what we're going to do is just create a new document. We're going to go to the left hand side and go into the shapes toolbar. We're actually going to bring in an ellipse tool or a circle and just kind of drag and drop one onto the board. Now that we have our circle, we're going to go to our text tool, right click the text and make sure that we're doing the type on a path tool. You can see that the cursor now has the little text icon as well as like a wave thing going on. So we're actually just going to click on the path itself and you'll notice that it's filled up this entire area. So type out your phrase. Select your text and increase the size a little bit using the same ellipse tool. Bring in another circle and let's just type in Happy Halloween. So now that our Happy Halloween is on the shape itself, let's say that we're not happy with this placement because let's be real here, I'm not exactly happy with this. You can rotate it to kind of even it out. You can also use these boxes here, move them around to kind of tell the text or the program to stop creating text after a certain point. In order to get that to pop up, let me go ahead and zoom in just a little bit. You're going to want to select the direct selection tool and you're going to hover over. You're going to hover over those white boxes and I don't know if you can tell, let me zoom in just a little bit more. If you hover over the white boxes, you can see that the arrow or the cursor now has like a line with an arrow that's letting you know that the text is going to stop on this side. So if we wait for that to pop up and move that box around, you can kind of tell the program to stop creating. Now this seems about right. So now that the box has been moved, you can see that our text kind of stopped existing. And that's because we told the program to stop creating text here. If we make the text smaller, you can see that it pops back up. So in order to create something like this, you're going to want to use that pen tool. We're going to go over to the left hand side and you're going to find the pen tool option. You're going to select that and you're just going to click on the screen. That's going to drop one of those nodes and you can kind of just click around and create your own random path. Using the text tool, you can then just type whatever you want and it'll follow the jagged line. Now let's say that you wanted to create more of a curve. So going back to the pen tool, we're going to click on the screen, drop a node, and when you go to click for the second time, do not release the pen tool. You're just going to hold it and drag it out and that's going to open up the handles which allows you to adjust the curve. I'm going to come down here, holding on to it, and we're adjusting the curve again. 
and now once more you can type whatever you want and if you don't like how it sits you can actually use that direct selection tool the filled in arrow and kind of move this around a little bit to get it into a position that you're more comfortable so another way that you can manipulate takes even further is by selecting the text going up to the type options on the top toolbar going down to type on a path and then we're going to select type on a path options this is going to open up a different box allowing you to really make some changes so we're going to check box preview which is going to allow us to see exactly what's being changed as it's happening by selecting flip it's going to take it from the top to the bottom you can change the effects here by selecting different options, you can see how exactly those things change. And depending on your text, it's going to give you different results. So another way that you can change the text is using that align to path. This by default is on the baseline. And that just means that wherever your line was, it's going to follow that line exactly. By clicking this drop down, you can see that there's quite a few different options here. If you select center, it's actually going to follow the very center of that path. If you go to descender, it's actually going to pop it up above the path and ascender is going to pop it down below the path. You can also adjust the spacing here if you want to. So another way to manipulate the text is by messing with the text envelope itself. And that one is actually a lot of fun. So really quick, just to show you the difference of what we're trying to achieve, if you click on the regular text, it's typing along an invisible path, just a straight line. Now, if I click on the text that I've already manipulated the envelope for, you can see that there's a bit of a grid that's on it. If I use the direct selection tool and I click one of these nodes inside of here, I can kind of manipulate the text even more, dragging, dropping it all over the place. So if you're looking to create something like that, all you have to do is type out your word, go up to object. We're gonna go to envelope distort and we're going to go make with a mesh. That is going to pull up your options and you can increase the amount of rows and the amount of columns that you want depending on how much you're wanting to manipulate your text. We're just gonna go with the default, which I think was four and three. So grabbing the direct selection tool, you can see that there's like those little dots all around. If you click on those dots, you can drag and drop your item wherever you want. You can also click inside of those boxes, holding it and drag it even further. This gives you ultimate control over the text and the envelope that it's in. All right, so to wrap up our text selection, another thing that I'm going to touch on is reducing the amount of nodes. Now, as I've mentioned earlier, nodes are the little pinpoints that your machine is gonna go to, to know like, hey, we need to go here, to here, to here, to here, to here. They're basically coordinates. The more coordinates you have, the heavier the file becomes. If you're selling these SVGs, you really want to make this as friendly as possible to machines. The more nodes that are in a design, the longer it'll take to cut them, the more wear and tear on a machine it'll do. And sometimes if there is an insane amount of nodes, the machine might stall out completely and just stop cutting. It has happened to me more than once and I can't tell you how frustrating it was to be in the middle of a massive order, a massive HTV design, and it just stop. So we don't want that kind of frustration on ourselves or even on our customers if we plan on selling these SVGs. In order to reduce the nodes, it's actually really easy. So I have one of our older designs pulled up and I'm actually going to use that direct selection tool. I'm going to highlight everything here and as you can see all and as you can see all of the blue dots on the screen, those are our nodes. I'm going to hide this black text and we're just going to focus on our orange layer so one of the easiest ways to clean up nodes is actually just clicking the object itself, right clicking, and then going to simplify. It'll pull up something that looks like this. By default, I wanna say that it takes away about 25% of the nodes. If you click and drag this little circle, you can actually make some adjustments and either take away a lot more nodes or you can kind of put some back. Use this with caution. Understand that we don't wanna take so many away that it kind of changes the character of the design. So 75 or a little bit more and you should be good as long as it's less than what was originally there. If you're wanting to see what was originally there, you can go up to window 
and pull up document information and this it'll pull up something like this now you might have to click on this little like hamburger icon thing and go to objects make sure that's selected and that'll show you where you're at right now now I had already looked before and our original node count was 129 and right now we have 70 points so we've definitely reduced the amount that's there let's go ahead and do that same thing with the black outline so let's go ahead and do that same thing with the black outline we're gonna select that and you can see underneath the points we have 513 so let me copy this and this is 513 and let's see where we can get it all right so selecting the outline we're going to right click we're going to go to simplify now already there is a huge difference we started with 513 and now we're down to 265. i'm going to bump this up just a little bit and I'm actually going to click on our direct selection tool to see exactly where all of our nodes are and see if there's anywhere that looks a little weird now. So zooming in on the spider web, I can see there's a couple of spaces here that we can actually kind of clean up a little bit. So using that direct selection tool again, I can see that there's a lot of nodes on here and we don't need all of those. So hitting the minus key, we're going to go ahead and delete some of these and then we'll just fix that curve itself. So grabbing the handles, adjusting the curve a little bit. Here's another area where we can take out some extra points that we don't need. And we can just use the handle and bring out the curve. Let's see if there's any on this side. This isn't too bad. It looks like a lot of those things got cleared up, so I'm pretty happy with that. There's some areas down here that we can clean up like this double node. And this one here. Now we can go even further and really reduce the amount of nodes here. But honestly, where we are at right now, let's select this once more. We are at 257. Honestly, we can go even further and reduce them more, but compared to where we originally started from 513 to 257 and from 129 on the orange layer to 70, we've already gotten rid of a lot of things and this file should cut really nicely. I hope that you guys are feeling on fire right now because we have just completed the SVG by you text section of this course and there was a ton of information in here and honestly even if you only watched the text related portion you guys can start creating and selling svgs right now once you feel super comfortable with creating text svgs i want you guys to meet me over in this video here we are using shapes this time and creating those graphic based designs let's go